the Joe Rogan experience. There's always been that situation, too, where you have these really hungry, talented artists and they get taken advantage of by whether it's executives or who, whoever is the, the money people that figure out how to lock these people into some long-term contract yeah. where the lion's share of all their work and creativity is going to be uh, enjoyed by the company and not by the artists themselves. You always have these crazy... That part of the model is, I mean, hopefully there's enough pie to go around everybody is kind of okay with that. I mean, there's a certain number you get to where you probably don't care anymore how much they're making because you're making so much also, you know. But uh, I, but that model, that's that that's not a mystery, especially if you're you know, but coming up the times I, when I came up, like, we already knew all that. Is if, you right. got, if you got locked into a bad record contract where somebody screwed you over, like, it's kind of on you a little bit. It wasn't like, it's not the 50s or the 60s where, like, we stepped into things and didn't know. Uh, and it has nothing to do with my background. I never got screwed over though. The worst people I've ever met in this business were in the bands. They were really? not. They were not the labels because you know who they are. You know what they're doing. They mm -hmm. don't really change. You're not going to be. You won't be fooled. You know, it's the people that you have camaraderie with that you think are in the, in the trenches with you that you find out. Like those are the people that let you down more that you get hoodwinked by. The business people. You. There's no secret what they're doing. Have you been? You've been hoodwinked by other artists. Every well, everybody has. Really? Yeah. I just. I'm not. I'm not making a point about artists or shitty. I'm just saying the the big bad record business. Like not. Not for me, not my days. I've worked with some great people. You know, some really supportive, uh, um, positive people who've been a great part of my career. Mm. You know, and I, I actually can't, I can only name, like, I can name out of 30 years, maybe like one or two people I came across who I hope I never see again in that end of the business. Otherwise, like, that's a pretty good ratio. That is a very good ratio. So, essentially, there's always going to be people that take advantage of people that don't really understand or are too eager and accept a bad contract. Yeah. But there's no excuses for not reading that. And we're just too far along. Like, yeah. you just, it shouldn't be that easy to fool someone today. I've been offered a lot of bad contracts, yeah. but I didn't sign them either. You know, right. it's that same kind of situation. And I've been in situations where I've looked at a contract, and it's that's the nature of most business deals is someone's going to do better than somebody else. Right. So when you look at that and you realize it looks like you're, no matter what, going to do better, this isn't a good situation. Like, it's, I don't take that as like a personal attack or think, okay, well, this isn't good for me. It's not good. For, we'll just, I'll go find somewhere else to do this. Just, they're just establishing shitty rules for the game for but you. But there's no connect. Yeah. Right. But they're in, they're in business. Right. right. You know, it's like, again, Prince, what was his, uh, what did he say? They owned his name, right? I think it was something, uh, they, they, I, I'm going to get the quote wrong, but somewhere around the time where he changed his, just the symbol, and, and they said something about, somebody said something to about the record business. He said, no, I'm not in the record business. You're in the record business. I make music, you know, mm. and that's, that's kind of it. It's, that, it's true. But they're not, there's no, there's no similarities to them. There's no reason that, you have a, that you're a great talent that you should also have a great understanding of the business side of things. They're not really interconnected for most people. But we are far enough along now where hopefully, you have somebody with you and things are more transparent that you shouldn't get locked into these horrible deals anymore. Do you remember when Courtney Love wrote that piece where she was explaining the music, I think it was in Spin Magazine, where she was explaining the music business in terms of like where the money goes and how they fuck over artists? Do you remember that? I don't remember that, but then don't get in the music business. That's not new. <laughs> I mean, it's not. Is that a revelation? Did no, you did you read that? And you're like, wow. Like it was shocking to me because I'm not in the music yeah. business. So to me, I was like, wow. So that's how they do it. Yeah. I was I was confused. Like when it t went into like you know, how if much you're a band, people bands don't do this anymore. If your band sells two million records, everybody in that band's probably making a lot of money buying houses, right? Mm -hmm. And that CD costs eighteen dollars. Like you're making your money, you're pretty happy. It's only down the road where someone says, okay, you guys, you you did buy a house. Did you see how much that they made? And you are shocked for a second to realize you take that CD and you divide it up between yourselves, your band, and what the record. Yeah, they make a lot more than you. Mm. That's why they're in the record business. That's what's. And there, you know, some of them are too smart to be in the bands, or not smart enough. Well, it depends on what what you can handle. If you can handle, I couldn't handle that kind of lifestyle myself. I don't. I don't want. I, I'm. I, I invent things out of nothing. I don't want to be somebody who I have to, uh, my whole livelihood is reactionary to other people creating something that I can now work with. Right. I want to right. make it from scratch. Yeah, that's a weird situation to be in, relying upon other people's creativity yeah. for you to make a living. Yeah, and but you know you can do that when you don't have a you don't have a, a, a creative bone in your body. Some right. people are really good at numbers and math. Some people are really creative, you know. And if you recognize early on, well, I would like to. Be, I mean, that's a lot of the great people who work outside of bands, once wanted to be in a band, but realized, like, I don't have it, I love music, but I want to be a part of it anyway. I want to help someone else do great things. 
you know? Right. But I, I'm not the guy to be in the band or the girl. You if know? you uh, have your own music and you own your music, what, is, what does a record label do for you in 2021? Well, what do you mean? If you own your own music? If you, like, if you create your own music, right? Mm -hmm. if you, say you hire... What could a record label do for you? Yeah. Well, they have money that you don't have to promote but, and spend and put you on tour. You know, young bands need, they can't, you know, a van or no van. It costs money to tour. Mm. A lot. You know, so... So that's they something basically that's, loan you the money. Yeah. That's what. That's how they can be good for a young band, really, or any band. Any, you know, it's like otherwise you just, you don't have the tools, the assets to get your music in lots of places. I mean, there's more opportunities with social media, of course, and it's you know, look. The good news is anybody can do it now, and the bad news is anybody can do it now. It just means mm. it's crowded, and there's right. just like it's hard to know what anybody's up to, you know. But now record labels, they can still have a, a great. They have a great purpose, of course. You know, they're you, some people say they're banks. They're just funding your trip, and you have you have a big bill at the end. And they have you a know. connection to streaming services. And yeah, they so have they all those contacts you. that that you uh, that you wouldn't have on your own. Now, when a person is like, say, if you're a new band and you get signed by a record company, uh, how does someone find out about you? I mean, what is the primary way they find out about you? If it's not the radio, which uh -huh. it always used to be, do they find out about you through streaming services? Like, are there channels that are sponsored that people get excited about because they know that this channel is where new interesting music gets broken? We're both going to do some homework. We're going to do some homework after this. And if I find out, I'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, really, that's the well. That's the question. I don't know. I mean, because there's it's just jammed up everywhere. You know, so a lot of great things about the way things work now. The models that we had before were really effective too. And at least you could put yourself on a path that if you did X, Y, and Z, maybe your band would get a shot. You know, play your clubs, get your demo tape together. Maybe a record company wants to work with you, and they're going to give you some money to practice. You know, you make that record, you make a video, and you go, they give you some money to go on tour. Like, this was a path to maybe be in a band that was successful. So you take that away, you know, it is just every man for them, every man and woman for themselves just, you know, trying to find a way to, quote, unquote, kind of get lucky. Mm. You know, if you're an established act, you got op you got op opportunities. If you're doing it the other way, you're just, it's really everybody is trying to get lucky. And wow. then by the, and when someone sees what that person did, by the time you figure it out, it's too late. They're, it's got to do something else. Everyone, that's what it is. I mean, as far as I know, you know, but I'm also not brand new. Like I, if I was 21 years old, I'd probably understand this better than I do. Mm. You know, the, I, the way I came up was just a different, I mean, it was just a, a different model. And that's okay that a lot of that's gone. I mean, it's changed so drastically. I mean, you remember in the late like 90s, they had, remember you know what the Diamond Award was? No. That's when they had to invent it. There was you know, gold record, platinum record. It wasn't enough. People were going like 12 times platinum. So they invented the Diamond Award, which was $10 million. Whoa. The Diamond Award, yeah. That's how much money was going around in those days Whew. before the internet, really. How many people buy CDs today? Do they still uh, sell? I don't know where you buy one. Online, I guess? I guess. Uh, Amazon? Yeah, there's, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess you, where are you going to play it? I mean, let's find... Your lap laptops don't even have yeah, hard drives. I think vinyl right? sells more than CDs oh, yeah. right now, but I'm going to get a breakdown real quick. That's interesting. What is Oh, for sure. No, no, it actually yeah. flopped. They don't... It was for a while like a bonus if your company wanted to spend some money and make vinyl with you. Now it's kind of like... Can we, I mean, you can throw in CDs, but the production of that is like, you know... Yeah. It's the cardboard you put around it. It's cool now to have vinyl. Yeah. CDs don't... They don't seem cool. But why would you have CDs? I mean, streaming is one thing. I mean, CDs are... Uh-oh. Wow, streaming's 83% of music industry venue. Wow. Oh, well, okay. Sync. What is sync? That's getting your songs in TV and, and commercials and, oh. and you get licenses. So that's know. 2%. Physical, 9% is uh, physical. So that's live performances? No, physical is a combination of CDs and, and LPs. and Oh, you know, physical things. Yeah. Oh, I get it. And then digital downloads are 6%. So physical copies are just yeah. 9%. So we're taking up the bulk of that pie right there. And then. Streaming, here. streaming takes up the bulk of the pie. So yeah, oh interesting. So CDs and it's kind of it's uh, in twenty twenty. What is happening in the, in twenty twenty? It says what? Uh, it's more read. vinyl than it is uh, CD and other. What are we physical. looking at? That's the the green and the blue. That's mm -hmm. oh CD vinyl. The green That's is it. vinyl, yeah. which is yeah. the largest. Well, you know, vinyl is not like blowing up. Anybody tells you it's back, it's not like it. It's not. It's not. You know, not buying Kiss. Not like Kiss records in those days. Right. It's, it's just, for. It's a boutiquey kind of thing, and it's cool. 
Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.